Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Suburban Proletarian. Now, in the past, we've taken a look at inexpensive mechanical and digital watches uh, from Japan of the type that have been uh, exported all over the country and worn on the wrists of all kinds of people from all walks of life. Uh, and we've also taken a look at some very proletarian watches from formerly communist countries, or, or some, in some cases uh, still currently communist countries, the Soviet Union and China and East Germany. And today I want to take a look at another very, very proletarian watch uh, from a country that we haven't seen so far. This is a watch that I've had for a couple of years. I bought it with the intention of making a video but it's just kind of been kicking around in the back of my queue uh, for a couple of years. And I thought, well, today's a good day, uh, as good a day as any to make a video about it. And of course, I'm talking about the HMT Janata. And for those of you who are not familiar with HMT, HMT is an acronym for Hindustan Machine Tool. Now, India is not a communist country, but uh, they're a democracy, but they have a uh, sort of an economic system and certainly an industrial manufacturing system that was modeled very closely after the Soviet system with most um, industry happening under the auspices of these large industrial holding groups, which are fully or at least partially owned by the government. And Hindustan Machine Tool uh, ended up making all kinds of different products. But one of the products for which they're best known is mechanical wristwatches. Um, I don't know how many different models they made, but they made watches in the untold millions. And I think almost all of them used the same movement, which I will uh, talk about a little bit on the tabletop. And because I keep getting complaints that I talk too much without actually showing the product, Let's just get right over to the tabletop and take a look at this interesting watch from India. All right, everyone. So here is my little HMT Janata. As you can see, it's a fairly standard 20th century style everyday watch of the type that normal people wore just to keep themselves on time on a day-to-day -day basis. I believe the Janata was the most common model produced by HMT, but it came in a dizzying array of styles uh, with different dials. I think there were slight variations in the case. Uh, they all featured the same basic movement, which I'll go over in a couple of minutes. And an awful lot of the ones you're going to find today on places like eBay, because HMT does not produce watches anymore, are going to come, A, they're going to come from India, and B, they're generally going to be sort of uh, what are kind of colloquially known as Franken watches. They're going to be either uh, redone in their original configuration with repainted dials and everything like that, or a lot of times they're going to be repainted uh, with some kind of a bogus brand name like Oris or Omega painted on the dial. So you've got to be really careful of anything you buy out of India, uh, particularly on eBay, especially if it's not in new condition. The, this watch itself is a bit of a Franken watch. Um, I don't believe this exact watch ever came out of the HMT factory, um, but I did buy it uh, from uh, Bangalore in India. Uh, the shipping address was just a couple of blocks away from the old HMT factory. I don't believe that this is repainted. Uh, so it does kind of qualify as a Franken watch, but I think it's made out of factory new parts. And I have a feeling, a suspicion, that these are being assembled by uh, people who used to work at the HMT factory out of uh, new old stock factory parts. It's constructed just like an original HMT Janata. Um, I wouldn't ascribe any type of... It does say that it's water and dust protected, but I wouldn't ascribe any type of water uh, proofing to this watch. I think it's uh, pretty much maybe splash resistant and not much else. Uh, we've got the HMT logo on the back there and some sort of case code. Um, shock resistance, that is true. It, it does have shock resistant jeweled bearings. 
and it is stainless steel as is the case with so many of these other very proletarian very basic watches like my little Chinese Shanghai and uh, my old Seiko 5 it does feature a nice stainless steel case um, but like the uh, like the Seiko 5 and like the Shanghai it does also feature an acrylic crystal and I chose this particular style uh, because it had a uh, I think a little bit of extra Indian flavor in that it features and I apologize if I mispronounce this right off the bat uh, the uh, numerals and the script uh, on the dial are in Devanagari which is I think the most common uh, Hindu uh, style script that's found on the Indian subcontinent uh, India and Nepal and I just think that adds a little bit of extra uh, sort of native flavor to the watch and I really liked that the, the dial is very very plain I mean it's bordering on uh, sort of Bauhaus in its um, uh, simplicity very very uh, straightforward uh, brushed aluminum dial with very very straightforward markings um, obviously the minute and uh, uh, our hands are just plain chrome with this red second hand you may be able to notice that the red second hand is missing a tiny bit of its paint uh, one of my cats knocked this off of a window sill the watch landed on the floor it wasn't a very far drop but it was enough to dislodge the uh, second hand so I had to uh, disassemble the watch take the movement out and uh, reinstall the second hand I'd managed to do that successfully but we lost a tiny bit of, of the red paint on the very tip of the hand there in the process um, and I it was loose it wasn't it hadn't actually fallen off of the second hand but the there was like this flap of paint that was sort of loose and I got in there with my little needle nose tweezers and just carefully picked it off because I didn't want it falling off and floating around inside the action there so we've got a silver tip on our red second hand which doesn't really bother me but uh, I thought it warranted explanation. Um, yeah, so we've got an acrylic uh, crystal. Let's get the dimensions out of the way right away because I know some people are going to want to know that. We've got a lug width of just about 18 millimeters. Um, these calipers are not the most accurate, so I would say that was an 18 millimeter lug width. We've got a case diameter of about 35 millimeters with the crown 38 millimeters um, the watch is about 43 and a half millimeters over the lugs and because it's a manual wine 17 jewel movement uh, with a flat case back. It doesn't sit very high off the wrist. It's just about... Um, what on earth is going on there? 116 millimeters? That can't be right. Zero. It's just about 10 millimeters high. So it sits relatively low on the wrist and it has a very classic look to it it features the HMT 020 movement which is uh, again 17 joules and manual wind um, HMT started watch production uh, I forget off the top of my head I think in the late 1960s or early 1970s and they got a lot of assistance um, from Citizen so the HMT 020 movement which is in this and which is featured I think in pretty much all of HMT's mechanical watches is based on the Citizen 0201 movement uh, which was also 17 joules and also manual wind um, this movement is a virtual clone of the Citizen but it's not a counterfeit it's, it was manufactured under license from Citizen and Citizen actually helped HMT set up production and at least early production models were built on retired citizen tooling. Now I think HMT, um, I'm sure some of that tooling wore out and HMT had to uh, uh, 
uh, recreated over the years. But uh, Citizen provided training to HMT production workers and also provided support with quality control. At least in the early days, there were uh, Citizen employees working at the HMT factory in quality control. This particular watch came with a really terrible pleather band so I know some pe it bothers some people when they see a review uh, of a watch with a replacement band but I can tell you the band that was on this watch was just awful and I've got this Barton uh, band with a quick detach uh, with quick detach spring bars and if any of you have watched the review of the Barton watch band in the past uh, a quick update is that the quick detach stud on one side has fallen out so um, it's not exactly a quick detach strap anymore but uh, I've been overall very happy with this Barton band it's made out of nice uh, soft leather and uh, I think it's aging nicely and I think it suits this sort of mid-century style of the watch very nicely uh, despite the fact that it's got the the uh, uh, Hindu script on the dial. This watch really reminds me, I think it's ma mainly the brushed um, aluminum dial. It reminds, and maybe the red seconds hand, it reminds me very much of a 1960s vintage Timex Marlin maybe. It's a really cool looking watch. I love wearing this watch. Um, so anyway, HMT, which uh, got into the watch business, is is part of a typical Indian Soviet style state owned industrial holding company. Um, Hindustan Machine Tool operates under the auspices of the Ministry of Heavy Industries. Um, now they're not making watches anymore, but they also make uh, largely employed in the manufacture of uh, bearings and tractors. Uh, remaining divisions still manufacture heavy industrial machines and tooling. Uh, but the wristwatch production was ended in 2016. Somewhere on YouTube, there is a video of the HMT watch factory, which is now s just sitting in a state of disrepair. Most of the equipment is still in there, but uh, somebody did a tour of the defunct factory, and it's kind of sad, but it's also interesting to see. So uh, look for that. I think if you just search for HMT uh, abandoned factory, you'll find that video. It's really quite interesting. Now HMT was not the only manufacturer of watches in India. Uh, their main competitor in the Indian watch market was a company called Hyderabad Alwin, which was another state-owned manufacturing concern, which made, in addition to watches, um, refrigerators, Nissan light commercial trucks, uh, motor scooters, uh, as a matter of fact, at one point in time, I think they were uh, the, the largest manufacturer of refrigerators in India. Um, and its watches were also made under license, but uh, in, that, in the case of Alwyn, the, their watches were made under license uh, from Seiko and featured a copy of Seiko movements. And I think uh, Alwyn actually produced some watches uh, for Seiko that were branded with the Seiko 5 logo. So... Um, occasionally you'll see Seiko 5 watches coming out of India that don't quite look right. They may actually not be Franken watches. They may actually be Indian produced Seiko 5s. I'm not sure about that. But uh, anyway, this is just a cool watch. I enjoy it. It's fun to wear. Um, I don't know that I really have an, a lot else to say about it. The, the movement seems to be very re robust and reliable. And the case is a little, uh, despite the fact that it's stainless, and it's actually fairly nicely machined and polished on the face surfaces. It's a little rough on the back, as you might expect uh, from an Indian produced watch. It's brushed. I think it's very uh, forgiving to uh, say that the sides of the case are brushed. They actually look like they were finished with an angle grinder. Um, but all in all, I mean, it's just a good, robust, um, reliable, everyday watch that served. I mean, these things were produced in the millions and millions and uh, served both the Indian people and uh, I think they were exported uh, pretty 
uh, heavily all over Asia and probably other parts of the world, and I think they served an awful lot of people. And there's still quite a few of these out there. Uh, so do your research if you want to buy one of these. Make sure you don't get burned with a piece of junk. Um, I would recommend looking, if you're, if you're buying on eBay, looking at where the watch is being shipped from. Um, see if it looks as though it were painted with a paintbrush and some Sherwin-Williams house paint, or whether it has a vaguely factory look to it. See if, they're, if, if the seller is located close to the original HMT factory. It seems like a lot of the really egregious uh, Franken watches are coming from uh, extreme northern India, up along the, uh, the border with Nepal, uh, and those uh, tend to be some of the worst, with the worst reputations, whereas watches more from southern India, particularly in the vicinity of the HMT factory, uh, seem to give uh, potential eBay buyers better luck. So. so at the end of the day, my HMT Janata is probably at least a little bit of a Franken watch. Um, it probably didn't come out of the factory looking exactly like this. But it does seem to be made of brand new factory components. Um, the person who put it together um, did a nice job with it. It looks um, reasonably good. And uh, it, I mean, it's an Indian watch. It does have a couple of little inconsistencies on the dial and such. But uh, it's a fun watch. It didn't cost a lot of money. You can buy these really, really cheap from India um, through sites like eBay and probably Etsy. And I, I imagine there's some other internet clearing houses where you can buy things. Um, and you can get them shipped to you from India for about $8. Now, I did pay significantly more for this one. I think I paid about 40 bucks. And the seller that I bought it from was within walking distance of the original HMT factory. So I'm assuming, or my suspicion is, that these really, really nice HMT almost factory watches are probably being put together by, by former uh, HMT employees using original factory parts. Um, Anyway, it's a cool watch for 30 or 40 bucks, whatever I paid for this. It's, it's a fun, rugged, uh, unique watch. It's an interesting conversation piece. It doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of wrist presence because it's fairly small. I don't have a lot of people coming up and asking me questions about the watch. Uh, but I think the, the Devanagari numerals and uh, script on the dial are kind of unique and fun. And uh, I'm really glad to have gotten a nice HMT before there is no such thing anymore. I don't think the world is ever likely to run out of HMT Franken watches. And um, some of those, I I've read accounts where some people have bought a an absolute Franken watch for seven bucks or something on eBay, uh, shipped all the way from, from India at a ridiculously low price and uh, had very good luck with them. I've also read some horror stories. Um, Again, I had the, you know, this is a very nicely done one, and uh, one of my cats knocked it off of the windowsill, and the second hand came off, and I had to open up the watch and reinstall the second hand, and I lost a tiny flake of red paint off the second hand in the process, so it's not perfect, but um, I'm pretty well pleased with this watch. So anyway, I don't think you can go too far wrong with one of these little HMT watches, as long as you don't pay too much money, and moderate your expectations. Uh, don't expect it to be perfect when it arrives. Um, and be willing to take a bit of a gamble. You might lose your whatever it is, $12. Uh, you might have to buy a couple of these before you get a good one. Uh, if you're willing to pay a little bit more like I did, I think you bump up your chances of uh, ending up with a nice watch. But again, I had to reattach the second hand on this one when it fell just a a foot or two onto the floor so you know you got to take what you get when you buy stuff off of eBay shipped from India so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please consider subscribing like share tell your friends all those things go a long way to help me out uh, and again a big thank you to all of you who are already subscribed uh, it was such a thrill to reach a thousand subscribers and achieve sort of YouTube legitimacy um, 
And when I post my next video, I hope to see each of you here then. Later, guys.